every single one of us here. Every single one of us here can change the world in three seconds. That's right, three seconds. And it begins with a decision that you and I make every single day. A decision that is often confusing, rushed, and almost always unintuitive. I want everyone here to think about the last time that you walked up with that Starbucks cup that had a lid and a sleeve, maybe a, a little bit of liquid inside of, of it. And you walked up to a bin that looked like this. What, what were you feeling? What was going through your mind? Did you feel a little bit subconscious? Did it make you feel a little bit stupid? <laughs> or did you completely ignore it? I know a lot of people walk up to that bin and they look left and right <laughs> and contaminate the bin. And that three second decision is where this all begins. When we walk up to that bin, what actually happens is that we get this decision wrong about 70% of the time. So we only get it right about 30%. Let's really think about that. 70% of the time. Imagine you're taking a flight from here to San Francisco, and 70% of the time, you might end up in New York, Tokyo, or Chittagong, Bangladesh. <laughs> and so when we contaminate by taking the wrong decision, buildings have no choice other than sending it to landfill. And this is where a lot of misconceptions begin. A lot of us actually are convinced and believe that recycling doesn't really work. I've tried my best but the city just dumps it into landfills. So why am I doing this? But what actually happens is we get it right only 30% of the time. And recycling facilities cannot take that amount of contamination because it jams up their machinery, causing millions of dollars of damage. When you look at the problem on a global level, it gets even scarier. The World Bank estimated in 2011 that 98%, 98% of whatever you and I generate end up in landfills, oceans, or we burn it. All of those materials that we've put in so much effort in extracting out of our fragile, finite earth, we end up burning it or dumping it in these landfills. For the longest time, we've also sent that waste and we've brushed it under the rug. And we've shipped it to willing importers like China that have really helped cocoon us from these harsh realities of our waste. But they've had enough. They've imposed bans, and they're shutting their doors. They don't want it anymore. And following China, Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, and every other country that we used to send our waste to doesn't want it anymore. We here in North America, Europe, and other countries are really forced to rethink the way that we've been recycling. And we simply cannot half-ass this anymore. For a very long time, we've also believed that somehow, somewhere, our waste provides them 
with an income. <laughs> this is what I'd like to call rock bottom humanity. We've negated entire communities to mountains upon mountains of trash, exposing them to toxic chemicals, open syringes, and various viruses and diseases, just so that we could get rid of our waste. I'll also let you in on another dirty secret. Most of these waste management, these recycling companies, are not in the business of recycling our trash. They are in the business of hauling our trash from one location to another, getting paid once, and then dumping it into landfills that most of the times they own themselves. To getting paid twice for one single piece of waste. And so when we got into this field of garbology, <laughs> it's an actual field, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what we saw was that buildings really didn't know how good they were doing, because the only data they actually had was from these waste management companies. And that really got us thinking that we measure every single thing. We measure electricity so that we could save it. We measure water so that we could conserve it. Heck, in this day and age, we measure our footsteps so that we could live a healthier life. But why not trash? There's no sensor or way to measure trash. And how do we expect to reduce something that we don't measure? Oh, there is one process, though. It's very technologically advanced, so I, I need you to bear with me as I explain uh, the, the most advanced process to measure waste by buildings. It's by digging through trash. They hire people to come into the building, tear garbage bags apart, and then they write a report. And once this post-mortem report is submitted, sustainability experts get together to figure out mainly one thing. Why couldn't you and I get that three-second decision correctly? And so what we really understood was that this entire process takes a very long time. The buildings measure this waste so that they could draft out proposals, change bins, labels, just so that we could make that decision correctly. But this year-long process, by the time it's done, the brands have changed their packaging, cities have introduced three new regulations, and what could once belong in that blue bin now belongs completely somewhere else. And so we really asked ourselves, how could we measure waste efficiently but at the same time, let people know at, dynamically as the rules change, as the markets change, so that it doesn't end up in landfills. And so most of you are, as, as we, uh, you know, whenever we go to a new city, my team and I, we're a bit crazy, we're a bit weird. Um, you know, you guys notice the architecture, the landmark. But when we walk up, we go to a new city, we notice the garbage bins. <laughs> That's what we love. And so we notice the symbols, how hard did it take somebody to actually sort trash out? And so it wasn't long before, with our robotics background, we tried to tackle and create a solution for this. And that's exactly what we did. We said, you know what? People don't get this right. Let's throw them out of the loop. Let's automate this entire process. And that's exactly what we did. So we built a bin that you could walk up, and you throw your item, and it puts it into the right bin. And we said, let's take that even further. Uh, that was a good clap. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to get better. Uh, so we took that idea. We said, let's apply that to recycling facilities. 
so that we could sort out the entire city's waste. And then we said that same concept could be applied to clean up our oceans. But then it sort of struck us that these are not sustainable solutions. It's a band-aid upon a much, much deeper problem at the source. And so rather than handing somebody the fish, we really knew that we have to teach people how to fish. And so what we created is called Oscar. Oscar is an AI that sits right behind a garbage bin. Using AI, it sees what you have in your hand, and it makes that decision very, very intuitive. So if you have a Starbucks cup, it'll ask you to separate it and sort it out until you do it. You get it right, Oscar gives you a reward. <laughs> Thank you. So really, this is the first time anybody is being incentivized to recycle correctly. If you put it into the wrong bin, I hope you don't, <laughs> because this Oscar does get grouchy. So it will, <laughs> it will shout at you. And so we took this entire Oscar experience, and we went to universities, and we wanted to see how would people react when we proposed this new behavior change. And what we saw was phenomenal. What we saw was students were willing to steal trash from you in order to get that reward. <laughs> Thank you. You're probably also wondering, how does this, this AI actually work, this Oscar? How does it see what I have in my hand? And so it sees the world similarly to us, but Oscar kind of focuses on garbage a little bit more than us. That's what it lives and breeds on every single day. It learns similar to how you teach a child or you teach a puppy a new trick. You, if it's done the right thing, you give it a reward. That's what we do. We show it millions of times what a coffee cup could look like. If it gets it wrong, then we get a chance to grouch at it. And it learns similar to how we learn. And by placing Oscar at malls, universities, airports, in San Francisco, Calgary, Toronto, Vancouver, what we've seen is that 30% where you and I were, that has gone to 91%. Percent. 91% is unheard of. And what that actually means is that one Oscar just one Oscar every single year is going to be eliminating about 20 cars worth of emissions. One Oscar, 20 cars. And our plan in the next five years is to provide 200,000 Oscars, which will enable and eliminate emissions from four million cars every single year. That is the power of education and nudging people at the source. Now, as I wrap up my, my trash talk here, <laughs> I really want to go back to those, those three seconds. Those three seconds will help eliminate and divert this waste away from landfills, oceans, and third world countries, those three seconds will eliminate emissions from four million cars. Those three seconds can alter lives of children that are forced to work in these landfills. Those three seconds. 
you know what? I would really, really appreciate if everybody could do me a big favor and stand up and rise with me here. And we're going to count down from three to one. Ready? Three, two, one. That's all it takes. Thank you.